as Nathan brings a message this morning, for anyone here who doesn't know you, dear Lord, that this may be the morning that they kind of know you as your Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray for this offering. I pray that you use wisely for that piece of thy kingdom. For in Christ's name, amen.
in Romans chapter 15, Proverbs, and Old Testament chapter 13, Romans chapter 15, New Testament. Let me go ahead and give you another one that's on the heart, Jeremiah 18. <laughs> what on the said, Proverbs 13, Jeremiah 18, Romans 15. Jeremiah 18, I'm not going to read it all. I read it this past week and something stuck out there, and I'm going to use verse number 12. Let me find a place if you're able. Stand on the reference to the God's Word. Proverbs 13, Jeremiah 18, and Romans 15. I'm amazed how the Lord works. He's kind of lying to Brother Kim after his thoughts and my thoughts up to God. And uh, praise the Lord. Proverbs 13 and verse number 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. This is biblical heart. This means the mind. And so it says that hope deferred or delayed makes the heart sick. But when the desire, and in this same verse, desire hopes the same. So let's look at it again. Hope delayed or deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire or the hope cometh, it is a tree of life. And then the Bible says in Romans 15 and verse number 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm doing my morning devotions right now out of Jeremiah. And I didn't get to do them yesterday morning so I was in chapter number 18 last night. It's one of my favorite chapters because I preached that message on let's go down to Potter's house for a minute. As many times, Brother Philip, that I've read that chapter, I, I Brother Ross over a hundred times before, uh, I, I saw something in verse number 12. And Brother Jim, it's a sad verse. It's, a, it's probably Brother Richard one of the saddest verses I've ever read in the Word of God. Jeremiah 18, verse number 12. And they said, there is no hope. Isn't that sad? Uh, I, I began to think that I will let you be saved. Lord, we love you. Help us this morning to get... Lord, I, I, I pray that you would take your message and put it in my mind and in my mouth. And Lord, give me your thoughts. Give me your words. Give me your heart. Lord, I want to have your heart. And Lord, that I can express what you want to say to our people this morning. The Lord will give you praise for what you do. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Jeremiah, he, he's been prophesying during the day in the reign of King Josiah. King Josiah, he's reigned as king for 50 years. And this, this I'll let this set the message up. He's reigned for 50 years and at the beginning of his rule and reign, a revival breaks out in the area. But at the end of his reign, there is a spiritual decline. It plummets at a, at a fast rate. And so Jeremiah here is the children of Israel. They're in an apostate time and they fell the Lord and Babylonian captivity is going to take place and all these different things. They're not they're not the nation they ought to be. Let's 
it becomes marred in his hand, but he doesn't discard it, he doesn't throw it away, he doesn't put it in the trash heap. But the Bible says that he works on it again. I'm telling you, a long time ago, God could have threw me away. A long time ago, God could have washed his hands of you and I. But how many is glad that he's still working on us? Amen. Amen. Sister Zoe and other little kids sing at the nursing home for us sometimes. He's still working on me. Those other saints of God, Sister Christy down in Ivy Hall, that's one of their favorite songs. And Sister Lee will play that song. And those uh, older saints of God
answer. And uh, he's tending to his father-in-law's sheep, Jethro's sheep. And he's 40 years of age and God speaks to him in the burning bush and tells him, Brother Brandon, to take his shoes off because the place where he's standing is holy ground. But Brother Todd, a whole other 40 years passes by before Moses goes into Egypt. He is now 80 years of age. He wasn't a young man. And then he spent that 40 years in the wilderness with the children of Israel. Can you imagine Moses? The Bible kind of speaks of that in Acts 7. Moses is talking to himself. And even his brethren are expecting Moses to leave the children of Israel out of bondage. I can see Moses back at the house saying, Well, when's God going to speak to me again? When's God going to call me to go in and talk to Pharaoh and set the children free? See, sometimes we've got to wait. I thought about Daniel. Daniel was anointed maybe around 15, 16, 17 years. Or David was anointed around 15, 16, 17 years of age. But they had to wait for Saul, for God to get Saul out of the way. And David was a few, he was around 30, 40 years of age before he became king. Think about Joseph. Joseph was denied by his brothers and threw him into a pit at about 17 years of age. And he spent that time in prison in Potiphar's house and all these different places. And he, did, he didn't get out of prison to his 30 years of age. I thought about that preacher comment thought all these dreams, the dreams about the butler and the dreams about, uh, uh, about all these, uh, uh, the, the cup bearer. And when is it going to come to pass? When is God going to do what he and I? That's our life. Sometimes we spend time waiting and waiting on God and things are delayed and things are deferred. But God wants to bring you to a place Amen. Where he's stronger. He wants to bring you to a place where he's abounded. He wants to, he wants to increase your faith and your hope and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I begin to think about hope and, and uh, how pressures come. That's what I want to preach on this year. All that was just introduction. <laughs> Lord, don't get nervous. I'm going to let you go a little off the house close. I want to ask you this question. How is your hope? Brother Jack, I've had a good friend of mine by the name of Frank Woods. Me and you know Brother Frank. As long as I've known him. He's called me every now and then. He'll call me Brother Ken. And uh, he'll say, Hey, Brother, how you doing? I'll say, I'm, I'm good, Brother Frank. He'll say, How's your hope? How's your hope? And that hit me this week. He called me and said, Brother, I heard you and one of you men's going to come down to the children's home and donate some things to the, to the home. He said, before I forget, how's your hope? How's your hope? And Brother Ross, I want to ask you all, amen, how's your hope this morning? Where is your hope this morning? Where is your hope this morning? And I thought about a lot of places where we can place our hope. We can place our hope in the world. Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 19, not to put our hope in this life, for in this life only if we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Don't put your hope in America. I know a lot of folks have been excited about Trump winning the primary or whatever down in South Carolina. And uh, I ran into someone at Hardy's this morning when I went to get my coffee. Or I had left there and stopped at the market for a second before going to the nursing home. And uh, he said, Preacher, I don't know what your stand is. He said, But boy, I'm excited about Trump. Making that primary. I said, that's, that's great. I said, I didn't know that. I hadn't followed. I didn't know if he got it and all that. And he said, boy, he said, I hope my preacher preaches on Trump this morning. I said, brother, you got me so excited. I think I'll preach about Trump this morning. He said, really? I said, yeah, I'm going to preach about the last Trump. He said, really? And I said, I'm going to preach about the Trump in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. That's the last Trump. Listen, my hope ain't in Cruz or Rubio or or. or
Obama wants to get the national debt. Amen. Let's get the national debt paid off. We may never get what, 19 trillion bills, whatever, paid off. I mean, we're, hey, listen, America's in a debt. And America owes a lot to a lot of different countries. But I'm telling you this morning, I know a man up in heaven, Brother Lee, that I placed my hope in. And praise God, he paid my debt. And he paid your debt. Amen. And I don't owe nobody anything, but I owe Jesus everything. Sit down to a little blue van. We call it the, 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 the Smurf bus. It's paid off. Little blue truck just about paid off. Only thing we're still paying on is our home. Right now, Citizen Banks is, uh, will own that for another 25 years or so. But man, if Jesus comes back, that Citizen Bank paid the payment or whatever. And I know, I, I guess, if we focus and worry and stress and fret over all these things, my hope is in heaven this morning. Glory to God. Don't trust in your pocket. Don't have hope in your pocket. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You can't trust in religion. By the way, I don't have religion. And you shouldn't have religion. We've got salvation. There's, there's all kinds of religion. That I know, and if you're not a NASCAR fan, I ain't preaching again. My dad, my daddy is a NASCAR. Hey, my dad, dad's blood runs with 10 W40 or whatever. I don't think so. <laughs> when Dale Earnhardt Sr. died, I was working at McDonald's as an 18 year old boy. And, and, and I heard about it on the news and I called mom. I said, let, let me talk to dad. She said, he's not talking to nobody. Right? <laughs> it's like he lost a brother. <laughs> and there ain't nothing wrong with that. That means they intimidate. Won't be another life. But, uh, but listen, I know people that are more excited about the Daytona 500 than Jesus coming back. And I know people that are more excited about fishing season and hunting season. And now don't get quiet on me. And, and, and yeah, I, I'm talking for all that stuff. I go hunting with Brother Timothy. He wasn't afraid that I should have been a fitter. <laughs> Oh, 
one day. You oh, Billy Graham said, Billy Graham didn't save you. Amen. He told you about the one who saved you. Religion, religion, religion. I, I have read about your religion. What about salvation? Have you been saved? Why go to church? Have you been saved? I pray. Have you been saved? I read the Bible. Have you been saved? I pay my tithes. Have you been saved? I do good deeds. Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus? Have you asked Him into your heart? If you ain't asked Jesus into your heart, ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Friend, as much love as in me is, I'm telling you, you're dying and going to hell. And there's no hope for you outside of Jesus. Young people, I, I'm for aspirating. I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I'm for dreaming big. If you've got big dreams, and you know, young people up the balcony down here, young people, I, I'm for having big dreams. But don't worry about the dreams of this life and inspire, inspire to be big or whatever. Hey, big, hey, hey, put it in your heart that you're going to be something God in life. Amen. Religion, Romans. 7, 18, Paul said, For I know that in me dwells no good thing. Or excuse me, Acts 26, 5, which knew me from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I live in Pharisee, Paul said, Boy, I live the, the most straightest, the most dogmatic, fundamental Pharisee there was. And he said, Religion ain't going to do nothing for nobody. He said, I would to God that everybody hears me this day when it was as I am, except these bonds. Not all those, but all together serving the Lord. You know what? There's a lot of Christians that are just almost. They ain't all together. Amen. Amen. A lot of Christians. But there might be some in our church, some in our community, some in the world. They almost want God on to me. Almost. I'll never forget being in a revival with a preacher. And, 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 and I, I preached on a Monday night. And Brother Ariel was a pretty hot, hip, hard, hard message, Sister I, I said, Lord, why would you give me something like this the first night of her life? And Sister May, I pray, and at the end of that meeting, Sister Billy, I said, if you're 99% sure you're saved, you're 100% lost. The pastor called me at Holiday or not on Hampton Inn, 4 o'clock at morning. He said, Preach, my wife is going to say. And you know, Brother Craig, I, 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 I think I just took two Benadryl. Well, I, I mean, I, I couldn't get it together. And I don't even know what I said to my own I'm pretty sure I don't even know what I said. And that next one, I got things together. Brother Jack, got called in pretty hard seven and something. I said, Brother, what, what did you call me this morning? He said, yeah, I wanted to tell you, son, that my mind got saved last night. Or this morning, brother. I said, what do you mean? He said, she woke straight up out of bed. And said, that preacher said tonight that if I was 99% sure that I'm saved, I'm 100% lost. Well, she said, she said, I, I'm not 100% sure. And, and, and I mean, I've been pastoring 29 years. His wife didn't get married, well, at that time, 35 years. And he said, well, honey, he said, don't close your eyes again until you know. She got saved to boy, they shall the house down that night in church. So I'm going to tell you that as a preacher's wife. And uh, I mean, as far as I know, my little sweetheart's saved. But 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 if Don came this morning and said, Nathan, I'm lost. I need to get saved. Boy, I, hey, I pick her up and carry her around this place yet. You might say, preacher, I've been a big a long time. I'm not sure in my heart. Don't worry about your title. Hey, if, if hey, I'm telling you, if you and I ain't trying to make you doubt yourself. I believe you know or you don't know. And if you don't know that you're saved, if you don't know. That you might miss will take you and, 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 and into the grave. You can leave here today and know that I would not walk out any of these doors until I knew that I've been saved by the power of Jesus. Amen. I, I'm, I, let me give you a couple more verses. I ain't even made it to my outline now. Hope's not in self. Romans 7 18, Paul said, For I know that in the growth no good thing. In the flesh dwells no good thing. If there's anything in you that's good, it's Jesus. Right. If there's anything good in me, it's Jesus. Our hope is in Christ. 
Colossians 1 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me tell you about, I'll preach that out once another time in the world. In Mark chapter 13, when I'm verse 34 through 37, the Bible tells us to watch because we don't know when the Son of Man is coming. Having a hope in Jesus will produce a watchfulness in your life. I'm a looking for Jesus to come back. I believe He'll come back in my lifetime. Peter preached it that He's coming back in His time. Paul, I believe he preached it like Jesus was coming back in His time. I bet these men of God have, have preached it their whole lives and their ministries and their churches. And I, I believe it, Sister Brenda. I believe. I believe now before we ever marry the girls off and you and I get to, get to, get to go strolling together with great hair, no hair, whatever. He breaks that guy off every morning and get the senior special. Before that happens, Jesus may come back. I'm watching for him. I'm listening for him. Also, I believe another thing. I believe another thing. 1 John chapter number 3, verse 3 talks us about living a life of purity, being pure. I believe having the hope of the Lord, you're going to live a pure life. You're going to make sure your heart's where it needs to be in Jesus. Every day before I leave my house, I make sure I was where I needed to be with God. Before I lay my head down to sleep tonight and go to sleep, I, 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 I'm going to talk to the Master and make sure I'm ready to go. She didn't talk me in the middle of the night. I believe it'll cause my body. The Bible, Sister Billy, where are you? Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me look for you. I know, I know it's here in First uh, John chapter number two. Just let me, just let me read it again. And hereby we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know Him and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in, but whosoever keepeth the word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And, uh, oh, here it is. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write to no new commandment unto you, but the old commandment which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which he have heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him. And in you, because the darkness is past, and true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. And the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us on down through there, that one day Jesus is coming. And we're going to see Him face to face and be made like unto Him if we abide in Him. I want to save a little time in reading. I believe hope produces watching, abiding, a purity, a peace, a steadfastness. Hope will produce something. How is your hope this morning, church? How is your hope? You might have a hope. And the children of Israel, I mean, I can't get over that situation. They said, we have nothing. That's America right now. More, more, the, 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 the Fox, CNN, all these, I don't know the, the news state. I watch Fox, but I don't know all the news. C-SPAN, all this stuff. I, I, how many times have you watched a news person say, well, I don't know if there's any way, I don't know if there's any You know, I wish, I wish, there's, I wish Brother Jack would just one meeting. They'd let me have just a little bit of air time. Not to get up there and rant and rave and, and, and I'd like to just get up there and say, I, I wish I could go to New York. Well, I don't really want to go there, but I wish I could be. Have you ever, Rachel, you, you've been there another. But if you go, is it Times Square? They say you look up on these big buildings. Sister Kim, you know, others have been said you look up on these big buildings and there's big screens, big TV screens and stuff. If there was ever a natural, big, you know, I bet 9-11 or something. President Bush and others might be talking to the whole city of New York and Mayor Giuliani. 
I wish I could get I wish I could get on that screen, Sister Patsy, for one meeting and just say everybody down in Times Square and, and Central Park, wherever, but if you can hear me, there's hope in Jesus. There's hope in I, I, I give as much scripture and as much juice as I had to the cut me off. I'm gonna tell you, church, you can have hope. Your hopes in Jesus this morning. Your hopes in Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, we love you. Lord, I pray. This is my heartbeat. This is my prayer that everyone here today is anchored in you and their hope is in you. Lord, if there's anyone here today that's never been saved, I pray that this would be the day that they be saved. If there's anyone here not where they need to be, I pray that this would be the day that they get to where they need to be with you. Get it anchored down. Don't worry, don't worry about what they haven't done, what they haven't been. Today's a new day. Things start fresh with you. Not getting reset, rededicating your life to Then, Lord, maybe there's somebody that, that they're hoping and they're, 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 they're waiting and expecting. But maybe they're, they're, they're hoping for something.